Photoshop CS4 Extended adds a whole new array of tools and features for working with 3D files and for painting them as well. The first thing we're going to talk about is this new widget for working with 3D files. This is called the 3D Axis. We can use it to move, scale, and rotate 3D objects. For each of the three dimensions, X, Y, and Z, we have three different controls. One for move, that's the arrow at the tip, then rotate, and scale. As far to click the tip here and move left and right, I would move this car left and right along the x-axis. I could also rotate along the x-axis and even scale only on the x-axis. In order to work with the 3D axis, you'll need to have one of the tools selected here in the tools panel. Before we look at those, I'd like to point out that you can customize this little widget a little bit. You can click on this gray bar to move this widget where you want it. You can also click and drag on the right side of this gray bar to resize the 3D axis. The 3D tools can now be found here in the tools panel, including the rotate tools, roll, slide, scale, and others. They've also been allocated keyboard shortcuts, and it's not necessary to enter into a 3D mode to use them. Also note that the Alt key on the PC or the Option key on the Mac toggles between complementary tools. So if I click with this tool to rotate this vehicle, and it's not going the way I want it, I can hold the Alt key or the Option key on the Mac to roll it the other direction. As soon as you release the Alt or Option key, your tool returns to normal. Photoshop CS4 Extended also now allows you to paint directly onto 3D objects. Go ahead and change my color here and select a brush. And now when I paint, you notice that I'm actually painting on the surface of the car. I can go back and rotate this, and you'll see where I've painted. In addition to painting on the diffuse channel of a material, you can also paint an object's bump values, reflectivity, or other properties. To access this drop-down list from the 3D panel, you'll need to make sure that you're using the Scene Filter tab at the top. If I were to change this to bump map and then select a black brush to paint with and then paint on the surface of our object, we can see that I'm actually creating what appears to be damage. Now this 3D object did not previously have a bump map applied to it when it was created in the 3D program, but that's okay because Photoshop will go ahead and create that texture for you. And again, as you can see, painting with black appears to dent the surface of the object. Photoshop's wide array of selection tools can also be used directly on 3D objects. This allows for more precise control when painting and adjusting textures directly. As I deselect this, you'll now see that I've created a bump area just where the selection was. Also, if I reselect that area and go to the 3D menu, I have a few options to hide polygons and surfaces around the selection as well. At any time, I could also come up here to the 3D menu and select Select Paintable Areas, which will show me the areas that are paintable. Going back to the 3D panel, we have four filter tabs at the top. The first one on the left is the scene. This shows us all the objects in our scene. Second from the left is the mesh objects. Third from the left is materials. This shows us all the materials of the objects selected. We can even add maps for properties like self-illumination and shininess, even if they were not created in the 3D program when the object was made. To create a new map, go across from the property and click this button and select New Texture. You can also choose Load Texture to load a texture you've already created. You can create nine different materials in Photoshop CS4 Extended, and seven of those can be painted on directly. You could also clone and copy 2D data onto 3D surfaces. If I go in my Layers panel and select this layer, this photo here, I can hit S for the Clone Stamp and hit the Alt or Option key to sample that data. Next, I can turn off the visibility of this layer and go to my 3D object, and I could paint directly on the surface. Also notice that because we still have the Bump Channel selected here in the Scene tab, we have the bump channel selected here. That is what we are painting on. If we want to actually paint the color on the car, we need to change the paint on value back to diffuse and then paint. 
Also note that in Photoshop CS4 Extended, the default value for the clone stamp tool is to show you the overlay. If I open up the clone source panel, you'll see that show overlay is automatically selected, and there's a new value here that's automatically selected as well called clipped. If you uncheck clipped, you'll see the entire image that you are cloning from. Selecting clipped clips the object only to your cursor. I'm going to close that panel up. And lastly, we're going to look at the ground plane. If we come down here to the bottom of the 3D panel and click this button, the one on the far left, this will turn on what is called the ground plane. It's difficult to see with the black background, so let me go turn that off. The ground plane is essentially a plane on the ground of our 3D objects. We use the ground plane as a reference to let us know where our objects are in 3D space. The ground plane is also beneficial so we know when we're rotating 3D objects or rotating the entire. Note that when we do these transforms using the 3D axis, we're affecting the object and not the entire scene as with the camera tools. And those are some of the new tools for painting and manipulating 3D objects in Adobe Photoshop CS4 Extended.